This is Sanctuary for the Broken Hearted Ministries. There is one name I love to call The name of Jesus Demons can't withstand No other name I know I can deliver At the mention of the name Every knee must bow Good afternoon beloved of the Lord Welcome to this wonderful day that the Lord has made We all shall rejoice and be glad in it Glory be to God in the highest Today I have come specially to pray for the ministers of the gospel around the world because when we look at the tremendous work these great men and women of God are doing around the world it's amazing the work of the uh, of the minister of God is not like that of a doctor there's no time limit anybody can call you in the midnight they can call you in the daytime they can call you anytime to stand in the gap to cancel you know to bring direction of the Lord to, to people but lately I just felt in my spirit that how many people actually are praying for these church leaders how many people are praying for us all we see is negativity oh this pastor did this this man of God did this this woman of God did this I said how many people are actually praying for these church leaders sincerely from your heart how many people have taken even if it's 10 minutes per day and say I'm just gonna pray for my pastor I'm gonna pray for that prophet the apostle the evangelist the teacher the church workers let me tell you I've been in the ministry now to the glory of God almost 20 years and I know from my own personal point of view that it is not easy to me be a minister of God, sincere one. You know, the one that God has set aside. <laughs> the one that the anointing of God is heavy upon your life. You know, the one that knows the cost of your oil. So when the pastor or the minister of God is bleeding, who do they run to? Who do they run to? Nobody. Because even in the church, the, some pastors, they find it difficult to even confine in any church member. Because sooner or later, it will be used against them. That is why I believe this, the, you know, the Spirit of God is laid it heavily upon my mind since night, midnight. To pray for church leaders. Our church leaders, they need our prayers. They need our prayers sincerely. They need, you know, us to stand in the gap for them. I'm going to be bringing scriptures to back what I'm doing today. You know, because if we don't feed, we, even the, uh, the shepherds, they need to be, to be fed. They need to be encouraged. They need to be strengthened with the word of God. And so let me just quickly open my Bible now, if you have it, to... Ezekiel chapter 22, and we're looking at verse 30 there. Ezekiel 22, verse 30. Glory be to God in the highest. As I'm saying today, today's message is going to be I'm going to be praying for church leaders. So I'm looking at Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. It says, Verse 30 says, And I sought for a man among them who should build up the wall and stand in the breach before me for the land that I should not destroy, it, but I found none. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. I have returned their way upon their heads, declares the Lord God. Did you hear that? And I saw, this is God himself speaking, and I sought for a man that would stand in the wall of intercession for our pastors, for our ministers. You know, we are not superhuman. We are, we are ordinary human beings, but filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. 
We are ordinary men and women that is vulnerable. We are ordinary men and women of God that temptation comes to just like anybody. We are men and women of God that have troubles, issues of life, persecution, <laughs> attacks. We have a, you know, household wickedness. People that don't get it. Instead of the household to be praying for you, they are the one praying against you. Why? Because they can see the light of God. They can see the glory of God upon your life. So, my opening text was taken from Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 13. The Lord is saying, I sought for a man that will stand in the world of intercession. That is all I've come to do today is to pray for church leaders. Church leaders are going through hell. Church leaders are going through challenges. Church leaders are going through financial hardship. Church leaders, um, leaders, ministers of God, they are going through persecution, spiritual attacks in high places. But the question is, how many people take actually take 10 minutes each day? Let me just and say, I want to take 10 minutes and pray for the man of God. Pray for the prophet of God, the apostle. Pray for the body of Christ. How many people are doing it? But all we know to do is to, is condemnation. Spirit of condemnation all the time. Let's open our Bible to uh, First Timothy. This is in the New Testament, right? Let's go to First Timothy. We're going to First Timothy. Because oftentimes nobody is taking time. Nobody, people are not taking time to pray for the church leaders. And then you, you are condemning the men of God, the women of God. Well, it's not, if you are not praying for them, how will they be strengthened? They need our prayer. They need our support. They need um, encouragement. Like, just like anybody else. You know, you cannot... Leave your men and women of God very vulnerable. You know, under they are under attack. Who is covering them in prayer? Who is covering them? I'm asking a question. Who is covering these blessed men and women of God? Sincere ones in prayer. We're not. And then we, you know, we still come and condemning them. This man of God did this. So I ask us to open our Bible to First Timothy chapter 2. And I'm going to read from verse 1 to 4. He said, first of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and for all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life. Glory be to God. Godly and dignified in a way, in every way. Verse 3 said, this is good. And it is pleasing to, in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of, of the truth. Amen? I read it again from verse 1. It says, first of all, then, First Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and for all who are in high, in high position that they may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Hallelujah. You know, you, you, we cannot leave the men and women of God open. You know, we, we men and women of God, they need your prayers. We are the ones we take time to study the word. We fast. We stand in the gap. People are attacking us. We are not just contenting with even just ordinary people. Principalities and powers. But the men and women, sincere men and women of God, they come under severe attack. So where is the covering for these men of God? Where is the spiritual covering for these women of God in prayer? You know, in the book of Ezekiel, um, no, a book of uh, Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 10 to 20, we are asked to put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. 
so that we might be able to withstand the evil days. Right? So we are not that battling with ordinary people. We are battling with principalities, powers, rulers of darkness in high places. So God is telling us, stand in the wall of intercession. In Ezekiel 22 verse 30. Pray for your leaders. Pray for your church leaders. A lot of church leaders are bleeding. They might not tell you. They are bleeding. They are crying. Financially, they are strained. Because a lot of us that, you know, God has said, we want us to stand in the gap and just do this work full time. We have families. that We have family. We have people that are looking onto us. We have bills just like every other person. But we choose to stand still. We choose to stand and just do this awesome God. It says many are called. Few are chosen. Many are chosen. Many are called. Thank you, Dr. Martins. Archbishop Taiwo, thank you, sir. So today is devoted for praying for men and women of God. Let me tell you, a lot of men and women of God are in pain. They are in, they are in, they are stressed out. Do you know, statistically, I remember when we were in Bible school, we were told that about 95% of ministers don't even make it. Only 5%. Why? There's a lot of them are burnt out. Some are, you know, they even uh, mentally they are burnt out, physically they are burnt out. There are challenges. We, you know, even we get a lot of insults from people, especially the prophets. The prophets are even privately, yes. Many are bleeding privately. Who did they talk to when they have problem? They don't have anybody to go and talk to. They cry to God privately. Some are talking the towel. Oh, I can't do this work. It's too hard for me. The owners is the God is telling us in Ezekiel 22, verse 30. He said, I sought for a man, I sought for a woman that will stand in the wall of intercession. Hallelujah. That will stand in the wall, in the gap. It's not easy to do this work full time. It's not easy to do it sincerely. It's not easy to do it um, according to the will, the way God wants us to, to, to do this work. It's not easy. You know, you're praying in the night. You're doing night vigil. I mean, I, I, it got to a point, I don't even know how to sleep in the night. Why? Because of night vigil. The Spirit of God wants to speak to you. you. If you really want to devote your time, which a lot of pastors and ministers of God are doing, but there's no even say, there's no thank you for them. All they get is heap of abuse, uh, you know, instead of you to pray, take time, pray for them. Pray for, you see, there are things we should be praying for our, our church leaders. We pray, number one, pray for wisdom of God for them. Because it's not easy to direct flocks, you know. It's not easy to shepherd the flock of God. You have the goods, you have the shepherd, the sheep in the church. So we need to pray for wisdom for these men, great men and women of God. Pray that the leaders do not grow weary in their do, in doing good. A lot of pastors are weary. But, you know, we need to pray that they will not grow weary. It's not easy. Also, we need to pray for humility for them. That God will give them spirit of humility. Because, you know, even as we progress in life, some people, honestly, they need to wear that garment of humility. And it's the, this garment of humility in heaven is the greatest uh, gift God is going to give us when we get there. And look, here on earth, it's only very few people that wears, that carries this garment of humility. Where you humble yourself before God. You are not puffed off of, of what you are seeing or what God is doing in your ministry. No, you humble yourself. Even Jesus is our great example. He humbled himself. He washed the feet of his disciple. Glory be to God. What do we need to be praying for our leaders? We need to pray for unity and love in the leader's family. Remember, if there is no peace in any church leader's family, that man of God cannot fulfill his destiny. He can't. If there is no peace at home, 
If when there's war all the time at home, my God, that minister of God will never fulfill his destiny. If they, because your home is your private place where you go, where when you get bashed, you go home. There should be peace. You should find peace in your home. So we need to pray for them. Pray for peace and love in their lead in these church leaders' families. Then also pray for trust in God. Pray that they will put their total trust in God. We see a lot of reason why we see some men and women of God. Sadly, they have deviated. Why? They cannot wait. Remember in the book of um, um, Isaiah forty-one, uh, Isaiah forty verse thirty-one. He said, "Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings as eagle. They shall run." and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint glory be to god when you have been waiting and waiting you are praying even you as a church leader you know that some days that church leaders don't even have meal on their table meal on their table they don't have money to pay their school their children's school fees they don't have money to even change their own clothes i saw some men of god some their shoes Oh my God, as one so faith. Why? They are doing the work of God. So I want to encourage those that have stood in the face of challenges, in the face of difficulties, in the face of trials, tribulation, in the face of hunger, in the face of spiritual attacks, and they are keeping strong. May God bless you. May the Lord reward you in Jesus' name. We need to pray for encouragement because we want the ministry that is lacking so badly in the body of Christ now is this boy is this ministry of Barnabas, the ministry of the encouragers. We need it because a lot of ministers of God are bleeding privately. They are bleeding seriously. They are in pain. Some are even thinking of suicide. Who do they cry to if not God? So we need to, that's why you need to privately be praying for your men of God. Pray for godly friendship and connection. Yes, they need it. Because I'm telling you, if they don't have someone to talk to, right? Your pastors, they need to pray for godly um, friendship and connection for them. Pray that God will bring people that they can open up to. <laughs> it's not easy when you are doing the work of God. You have challenges. Who do you go and talk to? Who can you trust in even maybe when you, you, you've done something that is you are vulnerable, but you need to open up to somebody and say, my sister, my brother, this is what I am going through. How many men of God have that shoulder to cry on? Not very many. But we need to also pray for boldness to be able to decree and declare those says the Lord. You know, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 2 and 3, the Lord was telling, the Spirit of God was, was telling Ezekiel, Ezekiel, do not look at their faces. For you not to look at people's faces when God, the word of God comes. You need spirit of boldness. You need spirit of boldness. You need to be bold like a lion to declare, thus says the Lord. We need to pray for guidance for them. That and direction from the Holy Spirit. That the leaders, our church leaders, will, I pray for uh, guidance and direction from the Holy Spirit for you. That you will not make mistakes. You will not miss your steps. You will not do anything that will bring shame and dishonor to Jesus and to the body of Christ. We need to be, this is the reason why we need to pray for men and women of God. We need to pray for connection with other leaders, ministries. Because you are not a, you are not a forest. <laughs> you need other people in the ministry. We need to be, to, to be connected to one another. We need it. We need to be connected to be one another. Glory be to God. So we pray that God will open divine connections for other church leaders in the name of Jesus. And then we need to pray for their growth. Because, you see, one of the things that is discouraging a lot of pastors, ministers of God, maybe you've been in ministry 20, 30 years. You can't even boast of 100 people in your congregation. 
Why? Because you chose to do it God's way. I'm not saying that those that have thousands and thousands of people are not doing God's way. Please don't be, don't hear. That, that's not what I meant. I'm just saying that some people, you know, there are so many attacks coming against them. Number one attack for men and women of God is household wickedness. Household wickedness. The Bible says, He said, the enemy of a man is in your own house. It's in your own household. People that are your people that grew up with you, people that are envious of you, people, even your own siblings, they are envious of you. My God, they are envious of you. They don't know what what is they they're still looking at you as oh my sister of old. Yes, we are still your sisters, but the oil is resting on us. Remember when. Uh, Prophet Samuel went to the house of Jason when he was supposed to go and anoint for the king, the next king of Israel. Who, was, who did the king, the, the, the prophet anointed in, anoint in there? Is is the baby uh, David, the one that is least qualified. So you can be a baby in your house, you can be in the middle, you can be uh, you can be uh, the first, and God calls you. Remember, we are not the one calling ourselves, you know. God is the one that is calling us. He set us aside for his glory, for his own use. And that's why when that, when the vow of a Nazarite comes to you, <laughs> it's a serious vow. Because God is saying, I am consecrating you for my work. I am separating you for my work. So God and God is a jealous God. So we need to pray for these leaders that they will not miss God. We will not pray for others and miss our own soul in the name of Jesus. As church leaders, we will not deliver others and we ourselves end up in hell in the name of Jesus. We need to pray for the love of God in their hearts. You know, because when you are doing something over and over again, after a while, you know, you don't have that sense. Sometimes we lose that sensitivity. And the main purpose of the scripture is the love of God. God. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. Should not perish but have eternal life. Glory be to God. Pray for our church leaders. That the love of God in their heart. Will continue to increase. That they will not grow weary. They will not grow tired. They will not faint in their work with God. They will not be tempted in the name of Jesus. Pray for divine protection. Hmm. If you know the amount of spiritual attacks that these men and women of God go through every day. My God. If you know the warfare we are going through. Let me give you a classic example. Many years ago, I went to a hospital in Kogi State where my late sister was sick. And I prayed for my sister and six other women in the wing of that hospital. The following day, they were all discharged to the glory of God. Miraculously, even like my sister who was at the point of death, God revived her. But in the middle of the night, I saw a woman that came with a long cutlass and was chasing me in the dream. Oh, you came to lose the goats we tied down. You see, these are the challenges that the men of God are going through. But we don't come out to cry about it. Even when you're talking, they say, oh, you're a man of God. Oh, you don't have a problem. You're a woman of God. We all have problems. But we know how to channel and who to run to. Hallelujah. And we need to also pray for temptation. That they will not fall into temptation. I mean, you hear all the scandals all the time. Oh, this man of God slept to this. This man of God did this. This man of God impregnated this. This man of God, God, God lured into the occult. Pray for temptation. That they will not fall into temptation. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Just equally as you are praying for yourself. Remember to remember to pray for your pastors, your leaders, church leaders. Pray for the body of Christ. Pray for their health. You know, we are doing this job. We are fasting. 
at the toilet. I remember I fasted one time, 90 days. I did 40 days several times. So we pray, pray that God will give us, grant us good health. Health is wealth. If we are healthy, we are, will be able to do this work properly. If somebody that is not well, will they be a good time to seek for you? They will, they will not be able to intercede for you. Shalom, prophetess. They will not be able to intercede for you. So we need to be praying for our church leaders. We need to pray for the prophets. We need to pray for the apostles, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, the church workers, the youth leaders. We need to pray for them. We say you cannot when you leave them, you are leaving them naked. See what we are doing, even for the few that is standing in the gap for the church leaders. The church leader is is covering themselves according to Ezekiel um, Ephesians chapter six, from verse ten to twenty. We cover ourselves. We put on the whole armor of God in our front, but our side and our back is open. So that is where you come in as an intercessor. When you are praying for your leaders, you are covering their back. You are covering their side. So that the, a, a javelin will not be able to be thrust in. This we need collectively. You see, your leaders, you need to pray for them. You, if you have not been praying for your church leaders, you are wrong. If you have not been praying for your prophet, you are wrong. You see, the worst thing that can happen to the body of Christ is for a, a prophet, a fake prophet to walk into the church. And nobody is able... There's no discernment. People cannot even discern that this one is not of God. What they are saying is not of God. The direction, because prophet, we come to give direction, exhortation. If you are not praying for them, you need to pray. <laughs> pray for unity in the body of Christ. My God, let me tell you, this is one yardstick that the devil has been using. We are so divided. Amos 3, he said, can two work together except we are in agreement? When we are so divided, we are divided against doctrine. We are divided, this is how we do it. Oh, this is white garment. This is blue garment. This is red garment. This is their doctrine. We are, oh, some people, they don't cover hair. Some people cover, so many things are coming against us. Beloved, let me tell you, this is the devices of the enemy. What the devil is doing is to bring division in the body of Christ. Whereas what we ought to do, as a prophet, the Lord will only give me some messages in part. He will give some other prophets in part. Then later on, we all collect what we have and we will see the holistic picture of what God is trying to pick, to give us. But when we are dividing ourselves, when we are backbiting ourselves, when we are killing ourselves, yes, killing, we kill it. You see some prophets or uh, some men of God, they will carry somebody's name to the mountain. Right? I will light a candle down. As this candle is burning, so let the ministry of this so so person be collapsing. Is that of God? No. Where there is unity, where there is love, that ought not to happen. Let's say, let's say it to ourselves. Look, let me tell you, the enemy of a man is in your household. The enemy of a pastor is a pastor himself. The enemy of a prophet is another prophet. May God help us. And then let's pray for purity. My God, this is one area that there is so much pollution in the body of Christ. Okay, you said you are a minister of God. How come you are you have buried animals underneath your underneath your pew? Under your under your people, the altar. How come you are slaughter human being and lace them there? What you are doing is a pollution that is going straight to. It's not even going to heaven. It cannot, because God will never allow that. This is why we need to be praying for our leaders for pure, spirit of purity. It's only those that are pure in heart that will see God. Yes. If your heart is not pure, if your heart is, is polluted, if your heart is full of bitterness, if your heart is full of resentment for your fellow pastors, for your fellow ministers of God, let me tell you, you are not going anywhere called heaven. If your heart is full of unforgiveness, if you are praying evil prayer against your fellow pastors, 
you are not going anywhere. <laughs> In fact, your prayer is offensive to God. Then we need to be sincere. Pray for sincerity. A lot of us are not sincere. You see, we do lip service. We are not sincere. We are not sincere. But this is where the prayer of the saints comes in. Pray for sincerity that our pastors and ministers they will be sincere in their heart, in their work with God. Pray for sincerity of heart, sincerity of purpose. Pray for us. That you know, and then pray for abundant blessing. You see, we have left. Peter said to the Lord, He said, Lord Jesus, we have left our families, we have left our businesses to follow you. What is our reward? God said, anyone that will have that you have lived your family, your business, your job, your whatever that you that is precious to you, what, and you follow him. He said in this life that he will reward you hundredfold, even in the life after. Glory be to God. So it's a win-win for us. And let me tell you, <laughs> it's a it's an awesome privilege to be called. A man of God. There is no job on this earth that is greater than the work of the man or woman of God. Quote me, say prophet has said it. There is none, even doctors. Their job, they are there too, they have their own, they are doing. But we are the one that the, the, the ear of the prophet is the mouth. That is where God Himself put his mouth to speak to us, and we come thus, says the Lord. The ear, the eye of the seer is the eye of God. Is what you are seeing. God opens your eyes spiritually so you can see. I'm not talking of those that have gone to wash their eyes with all kind of demonic things that they can see. No. Those that have waited on, on God. Those that are, they have stood in their duty post. Those that, if you are a prophet, you are on their watchtower. Watching to see the evil that is coming into the land. That is the role of a prophet. The role of a prophet is to see from afar what the, the evil that is coming. Remember, the prophet is a security guard in the spirit realm. So, before anything happens to anywhere, even in your home, if you are truly a woman, a remarkable man or man, woman of God, God will show you. Nothing will come to you suddenly. He said, because the Lord said, He said in Amos 3 7. He said, I will not do anything except I first reveal it first to my servant, the prophets. So nothing should come to us suddenly if we are keeping our watch. But what I am coming, what I am saying here today is pray for your leaders, church leader, pray for them. Let us look at Psalm 32, verse 8. Okay. If you have your Bible, open to Psalm 32, verse 8. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Psalm 32 verse 8. You know, it, it, the work of God is not an easy job. There's a lot of suffering that is involved. Hardship involved. Huh? Hardship involved. 32 verse 8. I will instruct you. Did you hear that? I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will cancel you with my eyes upon you. This is the Lord speaking. I will instruct you. So pray that God will instruct our leaders. Pray that God will direct their path. Pray that God will cancel them with his eyes. Will guide them. That they will not fall into deep holes. They will not fall into potholes. They will not fall into pits, into graves. They have dug for them. Let me tell you. There are so many times you see yourself. Even they will be bringing coffin. Coffin. Because there are some demonic entities that are praying that you die. Do you see the number of the rate of prophets that are dying? It's because there's no covering, lack of covering for our men and women of God. Lack of covering. Lack of covering. So, when last did you pray for your man of God? When last did you pray for the, that woman of God? You know what really makes me laugh sometimes? Some some people will say, You are a woman of God. Oh, you don't need prayer. Are you kidding? So we don't need prayer. We are human beings. We are not we are not spirit. Well, we are spirit, but we we are flesh, we have flesh running in our blood running in our veins. We need prayers. We need your support. 
We need your, 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 you know, standing in the car for us. We need your financial support. Yes. Let me tell you, a lot of seasoned men and women of God, they will not do commerce. I will, you see, I will never go and pack the small oil and sell it to you for 100 pounds. Because I believe God is my employer. He is my source. He is my provider. But God will also equally send people to sow seeds into you. You will labor, labor, labor. When the testimony comes, they don't remember your, even your, your phone number again. They don't remember your doorsteps. That is not encouraging for any man of God. It's not encouraging for any woman of God. You need to bless them. You need to make sure that your men and women of God are well fed, cared for. Then the temptation of them looking out will be very, very small. Small or none at all. Hallelujah. Now let's go to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3. I want to bring a lot of scripture so that we can uh, know what to do for our leaders. Don't leave your leaders open like a naked wire. Pray for them. Proverbs chapter 3, let's look at from verse 5 and 6. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Acknowledge God. Men of God, women of God, don't be weary. There are times we are weary. Oh, I tell you, you see, I am a realist and I come and I, I just open myself to that days as the Lord. I don't want to do this job again. I don't want to. I feel like quitting. But we cannot put our, hand, our hands to the plow and look back. Never. Done. We cannot. Once we answer this call, it's all the way to Calvary. Hallelujah. To eternity. We are not given the option of, we are not a quitter, not a doubter. God has called us. In fact, it's a real privilege, real privilege to be called a woman of God. Yes. So, also let's look at Proverbs chapter 24. When you look at Proverbs chapter 24, we're looking at verse 10 there. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Verse 10 of Proverbs 24. The word of God says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Now, what we're asking you to pray that the, the strength of this man of God will not fail. Pray that the woman of God will not faint. Pray that their strength will not fail them. Did I not just tell you? I said to you, some days I feel like quitting. Why? Discouragement. I feel discouraged. Oh, I feel hopeless. Sometimes you feel, Lord, why am I doing this? Look, I've been doing this job for over 20 years. I've seen what some of my mates are doing. I don't compare my note with other people, you know. I wait on God's timing. See, don't put too much on your plate as a woman of God, as a man of God. Otherwise, when you carry too many, you spread, you are spread thinly. So you cannot cope. If it's two pies, you can eat. Eat that. If it's three pies, you can eat. Eat it. We cannot afford to give up, Dr. Lady. No, we cannot afford to give up on the work of God. God has called us. Look, God looked in the whole universe, right? And he came, he came to you and said, you, I want you. I need you. I need you for my work. Hey, Lord, thank you for Jesus. Lord, if you are a man and woman of God, just lift up your hand where you are. Thank God for, the, for choosing you, for counting you worthy. Oh, he said many are called. Few are chosen. Few are chosen. Today, I am here to encourage that you, man of God, woman of God out there. Let's look at Isaiah. I've looked at um, Isaiah 40 verse 31, which is one of my favorite scriptures. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Right? They shall renew their strength. But they 
who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as up wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Glory be to God. So there are times we are walking with God. <laughs> you know, we feel as if our spirit is being crushed. We feel as if every all the weight in this world is on upon our shoulder. We feel like, oh God, how long I've been waiting, I've been waiting for you. The Lord said, the Bible is telling us that. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew our strength. So in your time of weariness, renew your strength. In the word of God, go back to the word of God. Go back. Praise God. Thank him. Worship him. Give him glory. Give him the fruit of your lips. Thank God the Lord. As filthy as I am, you counted me worthy. <laughs> it's not by my power, it's not by my mind, it's but by the Spirit of God. If God looked at me, it's, let me use myself as an example. If God looked at my past to determine my future, my God, I'm going nowhere. That is why I love to serve God. God does not look at our past. He does not look at the mess we have been in for all for him to use us. In fact, God is looking for those that are broken so that he can put them together and use them to showcase for his glory. Somebody shouts for his glory. Yes. God is not looking at your past life. God is not looking whether you have been divorced hundred times. No. If that is the case, God will never use that woman at the well. You see, this woman, when he, Jesus met the woman at the well, eh? those of you that are condemning men of God, Look, nobody has the rod of correction of any man of God or woman of God. The only person that has the rod of correction of any man of God is God himself. If you take it upon yourself, you will see what God will do for you. Do you know that Miriam, even though she was a prophetess, she was rude to her brother, Moses. And Moses happened to be Miriam's junior brother. Miriam, Moses went and married an Egyptian. And that did not go down well. So, prophet um, Miriam thought, well, I'm a prophetess too. <laughs> Immediately, leprosy came upon Miriam. So, don't touch the man. Say, touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Touch not, Psalm 105, verse 15. Touch so each time you are touching a man of God or a woman of God, you are touching God. You know, a few days ago, the Lord spoke to me, which I'm going to teach upon, upon the vow of the, 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 the Nazarites. God said, these people are consecrated for me. These people are set aside, separated. Go and read, go and read the meaning of being separated. Consecrated. It's not an easy job to, to say you're a man of God. But what we don't need is your condemnation. We don't need your condemnation. We don't need your backbiting. No. We don't need your attacks. So people are praying evil prayer. Prayers for the men of God. Do you know in the scripture, there was a place, I can't remember the particular scripture now. Some 40 men, demonic men, they grouped themselves together. They said they want Paul to die, Apostle Paul to die. What did they do? They were fasting, praying, demonic prayer that God doesn't answer. They were praying for Paul to die. Paul, instead of Paul to die, Paul was waxing glow. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Paul was growing higher and higher, mightier and mightier. So men of God, women of God, I've come to encourage us today. If we don't have people encouraging us, let us encourage ourselves. Let us develop love. Have love towards another. Don't buy back. To, see, if I see your ministry is doing well, I will be thanking God for you. If I see, if I, if I, if there's ways, things that God is showing me, you have no idea. I will reveal it to you so it can be well with you. When there's unity, Remember in the book of Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. In, when they were in the, in the, in the, on the day of Pentecost. What kept them? They were in one accord. In one unity. Oneness of heart. 
It's only when we are in one unity, unity, oneness of heart, the Spirit of God will descend, Malik above Satan. He will descend upon us and we begin to do miraculous things. But when we are devouring one another, <laughs> when we are cutting another shot, when we are, you know, when you know that there is greatness waiting for somebody there, your evil feet will run there and go and badmouth that man of God. You gossip that man of God so that door will close. May God have mercy upon you that does that. Today, I believe God, Spirit of God, want to help us. Hallelujah. So, as I said, I said, open your Bible to Isaiah 40 verse, uh, 41 verse 10. He said, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. So every man of God today, the Lord is telling you, fear not. Fear, when I say man, I mean man or with every minister of God. Fear not, for I am with you. God is speaking to us today. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Are you hearing me? I will strengthen you, you that is weary. You that feel like quitting. God said, I will strengthen you. In your time of weakness, God said, I will strengthen you. I will help you. Don't put your hope and confidence in anybody else. Don't look at somebody else anywhere else for your help. Oh, the Bible says in Psalm 121, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Though if you see, what makes some of us discouraged is when you begin to look at other people's hands. When you begin to look look to somebody, then you'll be disappointed. Do you see, the men will surely disappoint you. I'm telling you. Those that you put your confidence, don't put your arm of flesh. If you put your confidence on the on any man of God, on any human being, it will fail you. Put your trust on the man of God. Put your trust, sorry, put your trust on God. Put your trust. He said, look, he said, I will strengthen you. I'm reading Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. God is speaking to us this morning. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. There are things that will come our way. We, are, we feel like quitting. We feel like, Lord, no, 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 no. That This is not, if this is what the work of God is all about, I'm not interested. I've said it. This is why I'm telling it to you. <laughs> I will strengthen you. God is telling us. He's giving us his eternal reassurance. I will strengthen you. I will strengthen you. I will help you. Oh, Lord, Master. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I will, did you hear that? He said, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Glory be to God. God will uphold you. God will never leave you. God will never leave you. He will never allow you to be put to shame. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not be, you will not be hungry. You will not look at the hand of others before you can feed. God is the, is the one, the, 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 the one that owns the cattle on thousands of hills. God will provide for you. You will never lack for any good thing in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever you are going through as a man of God in this hour, I come as a prophet of God and I speak he released to you. I speak peace of God to you. I speak financial open doors for you. I speak, I decree open heaven over your life. I decree open gates of nations to you. God said, don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. Put your trust and hope and in me. For I am the one that has called you. Not man. I am God that has called you. You do not be discouraged. Do not be dismayed. Please, hold on to this Isaiah 41 verse 10. I'll read it again. He said, God says Isaiah 41 verse 10. He said, fear not, for I am with you. So, even if you are fearful, all of us are human beings. At times, we'll be fearful, even as ministers of God. He said, fear not, I am with you. God is talking to you. I don't know what you are going through today. God says, fear not, I am with you. Be not be dismayed, for I am your God. Do not be dismayed, for I am with I am with you. Like a terrible, mighty warrior. Don't be dismayed. God said, I will strengthen you. God said, I will strengthen you in your hour of discouragement, I will strengthen you in the hour of 
when you are weeping quietly behind your pot, when you are thinking, Lord, when is the next meal coming from? God said, don't be dismayed. I will help you. He said, for I am your God. Then it says, God said, I will strengthen you. I will help you. So God is the one that will send that divine helpers to you. God will release them to you in the name of Jesus. Any power anywhere that is to put a blockage on any man of God, any woman of God, I command that blockage now to be removed in the name of Jesus. Any blockage on your way, I call for the will, uh, the will, uh, the will, uh, Buddhas of heaven, and I put those down. Every blockage in your life, in the mighty name of Jesus, every blockage in your marriage, I I, I put those in down in Jesus' name. Oh, Rabbi Shatayah. He said, God said, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Glory be to God. God is upholding you. Don't be discouraged. No matter what you are going through, you say, Oh, God. Oh, if I've chosen another path and not be a man of God, maybe I will have achieved it. There is no other greater, mightier, powerful, more honorable job than being called of God. If it's true, if it's truly that God has called you, that is the, is the man of God. I say it and I say it boldly. I said, the fact that you are hearing the voice of God as a prophet, right? <laughs> that even that even presidents of nations, Greek nations, they don't hear the voice of God. What a privilege and, and an honor for God to come to you directly and whisper to you and speak to your, you at the back of your ear and decree to you. So hold your head high. Oh, Karaba, hold your head high like a queen and a king that we are. Oh, yes. In the name of Jesus. Every blockage is yes. They are uprooted, annihilated, and roasted by fire at once in Jesus' name. Everything that is making us to say, Oh, Father, if I had known, I would not have answered this call. Father, today, wipe it away in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that is making us to cry, cry, silent cry, oh, weep inside our bed. Lord, today, hear our cry. Oh, have mercy. Father, you are the God of mercy. Show us mercy. Don't let us labor in, in, in vain. Don't let us do this work in hardship. No. Anointing of ease. Let it be released upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let that anointing of ease be released upon us. In Jesus name. Now let us look at Isaiah 55. I'm going to be reading from verse 8 to 9. Glory be to God. Today I've come to encourage men and women of God. That's my assignment today. The Holy Spirit is laid on my heart. He said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. So whatever you are going through and you are saying, Lord, God is telling us, even though we feel the other way, but God, his thoughts, for my, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. So God's thoughts, God knows how he's going to end. And I know this is why I love to work with God. His ending is always going to be good. His ending is going, your ending will be beautiful. Your ending will be awesome. Your children's children's children. God, because you have answered this call today, God will bless them. Oh, Ramasata Karabashikehe. God will bless them. In your, that's why when I pray, I say, I and my household, we will serve the Lord. Even the children in my loins, Mali Kandura Basaba Katakeya, they will come to, they will serve God in the name of Jesus. My household will be called a household of priests of God in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways, your ways to cleanse the Lord. Verse 9 says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So I don't know what you are going through in the physical right now, I don't know. But the one that searches our hearts, the one that knows you, the know the one that called you, that formed you, even before your mother even knew she was called, she was pregnant. He said, I am with you. I am with you. Hallelujah. Let us go to the book of Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Hallelujah. I'm winding up because I've been speaking for a while. May the Lord strengthen every man and woman of God. That you are holding on forth your word of God. Hallelujah. He said, call unto me. Call to me and I will answer you. God is telling us this afternoon, please. Call unto me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Did you hear that? Call upon me. 
And where do we call upon God, men of the non accord? In our closet. In our prayer closet. When we are praying, fasting, calling on, crying on God. Oh God, hear me. Oh God, answer me. Oh God, reveal yourself to me. God said, I will reveal my deep secret to those that fears me. So it's only those people that are, that, that, that have fear of God. God will reveal his deep, his deep secret to you. God will show you the future. God will show you things that you need to know. That will make your life beautiful. That will make your life glorious. Let me tell you, there are so many, there are so much attack going on in the body of Christ. You see, when the devil knows that they cannot catch you, they will go for your children. They will go for your grandchildren. The devil is a bastard. He's a liar. You know why? Our house, the covering of God is upon us. The head of protection of God is upon us. We are on, we and our children's children, we are untouchable in the mighty name of Jesus. That shame, that garment of shame the devil wants to bring, we, we command that garment to catch fire in the name of Jesus. That garment of discouragement, we, we command that garment of discouragement to catch fire in the name of Jesus. That, that failure they are bringing, you see, the reason why the devil is doing what he's doing is why? To make you look stupid. To make you say, look at, you say you are a man of God, you are a woman of God, you are divorced. Is it not the devil that brought it? I, I, was, I was speaking to somebody, I said, look, how do you see something that is good? You leave it. Some people, they keep their mouth quiet because they are men of God. They die there. They are they women of God. They die even when they are going through oppression. They are going through hell. May God open our eyes to see. Look, in as much as God hates divorce, God does not tell you to die in there. Get out there. Speak. Look for people. That's why I prayed one prayer for us earlier on. I said, may God bring people that you can confine in. Because a lot of things that is doing, that is, that is how, um, affecting men and women of God is that they don't have people to open up their heart to. They feel, they feel vulnerable. Because they know if they open up, tomorrow they will put it, it will be your headline on Facebook. Because you open up your heart. And that's why you see a lot of men, of, they are breaking down mentally. Ole Masoto Kayaba. Father, in the name of Jesus. Any power that is attacking the men and women of God. Sincere men and women of God. Powers from the pit of hell that is being released against the body of Christ. We command the arrow of God, the anger of God, the thunder of God. So scatter them by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Scatter them, O God. Scatter them, O God. Wherever they are gathered against any man or woman of God. Father, I ask, Lord, send your angels, O God. Scatter them by fire. Scatter them by fire. Scatter them by fire in the name of Jesus. Powers. That says we will not make it in ministry. You are a liar. Who have spoken when God Himself has not spoken? Oh, Lama Sata Katayadabaha. Look, I want you to be stirred up in your spirit. I want you to be angry in your spirit. And say, say, Satan, take your ugly hand off my life. Take your ugly hands of my ministry. Take your ugly hands of my family, my children, anything that is precious off to me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We already have the victory. Hallelujah. Victory is ours in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not save others and we ourselves will go to hell. See, men of God, including myself, please, this, let us live a life of holiness, life of purity. Let our altar be pure because the reason why some people are going through living hell because their altars have been compromised. The devil have stolen their, their power. When you are a woman of God, you find you cannot more pray. That means the devil is attacking your prayer altar. It's a wake up call. Wake up. Jump on a fast. Go on a fast. Begin to cry to God. Oh Lord, help me. If God does not help us, we cannot help ourselves, even as men and women of God. You see a lot of great men and women of God. Sadly, what happened to them? They are falling. I say when they fall. We need people to pick, to pick them up. You see, it's only in the body of Christ when you see men of God fall down. You know what they will do? They will crush you. Instead of them to help you to get up, they will make sure you remain on the floor. You don't get up. May God help us. Look, we need to start to look for one another. Let's be our brother's keeper. Let's be our sister's keeper. 
And when people come to us in confidence, please let it remain there. Don't use it to make a salmon on your, on your pulpit. No. Because, you see, we are our own brother's keeper, our sister's keepers. Let's help ourselves. Let's stand in the gap for ourselves. That's what I was saying. I said, how many, they, you know, I started this message with Ezekiel 22, verse 30. God is looking for those that will stand in the wall of intercession. For the land, for the land so that he will not destroy it. God wants us to pray in 1 Timothy 2, to verse, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse, verse 1 to 4. God asking us to pray for church leaders. Church leaders, they need our prayers. You see, you see all these shepherds, some of them are falling. Some of them die early. God bless you, Dr. Candice. Some die early. Why? There is no covering. There is no covering for them. You hear this man of God is dead today. Tomorrow, this man of God died. What is killing this man of God? No covering. They are open like a naked wire. There is no covering in prayer for them. People are not praying for them. I asked a question before. I said, how many times have you taken just 10 minutes each day? Let me pray for my pastor. Let me pray for the man of God. But what we get is, oh, this person is a faith man of God. Is this, is that. If you are praying the wisdom of God for them, they will not, miss, they will not go astray. If you are praying that your, your leaders will not go weary, weary in doing good, they will not. If you are praying for humility, spirit of humility for your leaders, church leaders, they will not. If you are praying for unity and love for our leaders and families, there is no, where there is no love, Satan is there. Where there is no love, Satan is there. Where there is backbiting, fighting, Satan is already occupied, even among husband and wife. When you see fight coming to your home, when you see trouble coming to your home, the Satan will come and whisper something about your wife to you. You instead of you to rebu rebuke that voice, you say it's your wife. Be wise. Don't fight your wife. Fight that Satan that's coming between you two. Dismantle that power in the name. And let me tell you, you see some of these fake prophets, fake men of God, when they see the genuine ones, the real McCoy, what did they do? They'll be fighting you. They take your name, your picture. There, there are some of them, they will take it from Facebook. They're taking it. That's why I prayed one prayer yesterday. I said, Father, any wicked leader, any wicked personality that will take my picture, my children's picture, my children's children's picture, my ministry, anything pertaining to me, and put it on any satanic altar, I command the earthquake of God to descend wherever that demonic altar is and let it be crushed in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't pray evil prayer for any man of God. I don't pray any evil prayer for any woman of God. In fact, I am praying that it is his well with you. I am praying that God will promote your ministry. I am praying that God will open doors for you. I am praying for good health for you. I am praying for gates of nation to be opened unto you. Ikapori masama katakata yababu satan. That is my heart for you. That is my prayer for you. That God will bless you and you will have overflow in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will not lack any good thing. Your family will not lack anything. You will not be tied down in sick bed. Every arrow that the enemy is firing to you will return them back to the descenders in the mighty name of Jesus. Huh. Beloved, you see, a closed mouth is a closed destiny. If you close your mouth and not pray, let me tell you, when, when if you tell people to pray for you, they can only pray for you if they love you 15 minutes max. 20 minutes. Unless you have a prayer budget from God, that is where you lock yourself in the room and you begin to pray. You pray like a wounded tiger. You pray like a, a mad prophet. Yes. Why? Because it has become a body to you. When I say prayer body, one time I was praying, I was cooking in my kitchen here in London. And the Lord brought one politician in Nigeria to me. I said, leave everything you are doing. Go now and start to pray. I interceded for this man. I don't know him. For two hours solid. When I later came out and I opened Facebook, now I saw that man was actually kidnapped. That was why the man was in serious trouble. You see, it's good for our ears to be attentive to the voice of God. 
and when God speaks to us, let us do it. No, don't, don't say it's not convenient, Stan. Your prayer can save somebody. Yes. That minute prayer, you can, God is telling you, pray for this person now. It can be a matter of life and death. May the Lord be with us. Let's pray. Pray for your church, your church leaders that it is well with them. Bless them financially. Bless them. You see, if a man of God is hungry, then I'm telling you, they cannot pray. They will not pray. They will not pray. And you need that. You see, the oil we carry is what you people come and tap into. And that's why we are praying. We say we pray for overflow. Because it is out of our overflow that you will come to partake. So if it's only on a cup level, that is for me. I'm not giving you. But pray that I'll have an overflow in my, in my oil. So from that overflow, we raise the dead. We heal the sick. We cast the demon out in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved men and women of God, don't be weary in, in your well-doing. For in due season, God will bless you. We will bless the work of your hand. God will bless your family. God will bless your ministry. God will expand you. God will, <laughs> will open his heaven to you. So you he will pour out his blessing. You have no room to contain them. In the mighty name of Jesus. So let us continue to pray for one another. Let us uphold one another. Let's stop by biting. Let's stop knifing one another on the back. It's demonic. It's not. It's uncalled for. And it's not godly. If you are a woman of God, a man of God, you are praying evil, demonic evil prayer for another fellow woman of God. You know your place if you do not repent. It's in hell. Hellfire. Hellfire. So may God have mercy upon us. So lastly, I pray that every man of God, Lord, that every woman of God that is crying out to you in this hour, oh God, that don't even know what to do, Father. That man, that woman that is crying out to you, King of glory, that is asking you, Lord, where are you? Oh Lord, appear to them. Oh Lord, come to them, come true for them. That man of God, that woman of God that is discouraged, Father, be their encourager. That man of God, that woman of God, that is feeling suicidal. Father, let them know that you are God, that you are with them. Your words say, fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God, says the Lord. Father, that woman of God, that woman of God that is in financial difficulties, Father, open your heaven to them. Open your heaven that they have no room to contain your blessing, O God. Open your well, O God, Father. Lord, every wealth that has been stolen will recover it for them, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you are the way maker. You are the way maker, Father. You are the rewriter of our history. You are the rewriter of our destiny. Father, make a way for every man and woman of God that is serving you sincerely from your heart. Father, make a way where there seems to be no way. Father, Lord, when we open our mouth and cry to you, Father, you said you will hear us, O God, and you will answer us, O God. Father, there's many tonight, O Lord, that are crying to you, O God. Father, hear their cry. Hear their cry, O oh God. Hear their cry, O oh God. Wipe away their tears, O oh God. Makule masunda ya bakute ketere. Makunde bili masunda kata kata raba soko. Ima nanana makuli kababa shata. Ya amosunda maana kata. That man that is feeling suicidal. That woman that is feeling suicidal. My God and my Father. Father, why Father? Heal his heart. Heal the heart, O oh God. Heal their heart, O oh God. Touch them, O oh God. God. Renew them, O oh God. Strengthen their inner man. Oh, Father, let our inner man receive fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lama Sota Kayara Basata. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, I pray. I pray for any man of God, any woman of God that has backslidden right now. That, Father, you will redirect their footsteps, O oh God. Father, let put that burden of their first love being upon their heart. Father, Lord, let us be like the, 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 the deer that panted, out, panted after your water brooks, O oh God. Father, let us hunger after righteousness. Let us hunger after you, O oh God. Father, let our relationship be renewed daily, O oh God. Let 
I'll walk with you, not grow weary, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, peradventure, any man or woman of God is in sick bed right now. Father, he says, is there any sick among you? Let the elders of the church come and pray. The prayer of the elder will heal the sick. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. I send for the word of God to you right now. In any area, about any part of your body you are sick, I send for the word of God to you. I send the balm of Gilead of God to you. I send the healing power of God to you right now. Rise up from your sick bed in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Laba Satayabaha. Whatever it is that you are asking God for, may the Lord provide it for you. May you not lack any good thing in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever it is that is giving you sleepless night, may the Lord come true for you in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord prosper the work of your hand. May the Lord bless your ministry. Those that are waiting upon you sincerely, Lord. Those that have not had um, other demonic entities to the work of God. Father, I pray embarrass them with your blessing that they have no room. We have no room to contain it, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, my Father and my God. Oh, Father, Lord, touch every heart of the minister of God. Touch every heart of your minister, oh God. Heal them, oh God. Restore them, oh God. Give them open heaven. Oh, Father, let the word of God in their mouth go. Let it be accurate, oh God. Let be, let it be like a sharp two edged sharp sword in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Apostle Michael Alabi, God bless you, sir. Dr. Vivian, God bless you. And all those men, women, and women of God, today is our day. God has opened our book of remembrance. Today, God wants us. I want you to be strengthened in your inner man. No, look. There is no greater job. I say, our job as a man, a prophet of God, is more than that of any president of a nation. Because it's us, God, who used to go and release the word of God to the president. That will bring direction to the church, the body of Christ. So it's a great honor and privilege to be called a man and woman of God. Don't be weary. Don't throw in the towel. You are not a quitter. And you are not a doubter. God will suddenly come to you and will open his treasures of blessing unto us, the ministers of God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord protect us. May the Lord shield us from harm. We will live and not die. According to Psalm 118 verse 17, God said, put your name in it. I put my name. I, Margaret Mayaki, I will not die. My children will not die. Anything precious to me will not die. So I decree for you too in the mighty name of Jesus. With long life, the Lord shall satisfy us. The numbers of our days it shall be elongated. We will not fall. We will not falter in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not come into error in the name of Jesus. We will not bring shame and dishonor to the name of the Lord we serve in the name of Jesus. We will continue to walk with God. We will continue to serve him. Our fellowship will become stronger and work stronger in Jesus' name. It is well with you and it is well with your soul in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Please continue to pray for me too. I too need prayer. I need your support. I need your prayer because in lack of prayer, when we are not doing what every believer is supposed to stand on Ezekiel 22 verse 13. God said, I sought for a man that will stand in the wall of intercession so that I will not destroy the land. So when we, when we stop praying for one another as ministers of God, we are not doing ourselves a favor. When the body of Christ is not praying for us, they are not doing us a favor. Let I pray that God will place that burden of prayer on each and everyone's heart for the leaders in the body of Christ. And may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. My name is, if you're watching me for the first time, my name is Dr. Margaret. My Aki, by the grace of God, I'm the general overseer of a ministry called Sanctuary for the Brokenhearted Internationals, where God, to the glory of God, has raised the dead, healed those who have got cancer, brought countless fruit of the womb to women that are, in, that are in need of children. God has brought his prophetic word to leaders of nations, and I just give thanks to God 
God does not determine because you are a woman. No, he does not look at you. He said, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, both male and female. And may the Lord guide us. May the Lord protect us, shield us in Jesus' name. Please help me share this video. Put it on your storyline. Put it in your group to help pastors, to help leaders that are growing weary. Those that are even contemplating abandoning the work of God. This is not time for us to quit. It's time for us to refire and pursue more. I love you with the love of the Lord. Shalom, shalom. Peace of God to you. God bless you. Amen.